Here's our problem. Uh, dirt roads are often corrugated. You can see them in the picture here. There are these ripples here. The wavelengths from one ripple to another of a few centimetres, uh, which seem to be caused whenever lots of cars drive over them. Um, every now and then the roads are graded um, but the, and smooth, but as time goes on they get more and more corrugated till they become a nightmare to drive on. Now where do these things come from? Um, in this webcast I'm going to test an hypothesis. My hypothesis is that these ripples are caused by cars vibrating. As a car drives along, um, the body of the car is raised up on suspension. And this suspension is connected to the wheels by springs. So if you have a weight, the car, on a spring, it can resonate, so vibrate at a particular frequency. I'm wondering if just the irregularity of the ground causes the car and all the cars driving over to vibrate at a particular frequency, and that this particular frequency causes ripples of this particular wavelength. Well, that's a theory. And there are lots of possible arguments for and against it, but right now I'm just going to test one argument. Would this sort of oscillation actually give you the right sort of wavelength? Would you expect um, ripples a centimetre or a few apart? Um, if so, the theory survives, and we might want to test it some other ways. If, on the other hand, the theory says that the ripples will you know, be a, a millimetre or a kilometre, then clearly the theory is dead. So it's that idea. We're only off for a very rough figure. We want to know very roughly, very approximately, how big the ripple should be from an oscillation. OK, so what's a car look like? Um, well, a car, of course, has a rather complicated set of suspension. But we're going to have a very simple model of a car here, which is a weight, the body of the car, the suspension, and the wheels. And, of course, a real cars are suspensions at funny angles, and there are multiple springs and dampers and who knows what. But let's try this very simple model, which is probably not totally unrealistic. The combination of all the different springs that are there in a real car can probably be approximated just as one thicker spring. So given this, would you expect, how would you expect it to oscillate? Now this is a standard um, weight on a spring, spring a weight, so it will oscillate, it will have a particular frequency given by the equation omega equals root k over m. So for that we need to know the spring constant k and the mass m. Now, if you can easily look up the mass of typical cars, they're typically one to two tons, so let's, for simplicity's sake, give it a mass of about a thousand kilograms a ton. That's actually a pretty small car, most cars would be a bit more than that, but to within a factor of two, that's okay. Spring constant's a bit harder, you can't really look that up. Um, you could look up the individual components, but how the effect of spring constant you get when you have a whole bunch of different springs at different angles is a bit tricky. Luckily, we have a way to work it out. Um, I observe that when I climb into the car, it's me going into a car, the car sags a bit. Um, so that's telling you that my weight um, causes the car to dip, and it typically dips by mm, maybe a centimetre or two. It's called two centimetres, something like that. And let's say I weigh 100 kilograms. I don't, but it's close enough. So that's telling us that when you add the weight, extra weight, that causes a spring to compress. So we know that the force exerted by a spring is equal to k times the displacement. The spring is already displaced by the weight of the car, so this is an extra displacement. But the same thing applies to extra displacements as well. So we have a force, which is my mg, 100 times 10, equals k times... 0.02 meters, so k is around 50,000 newton meters. Okay, so we have k, and we have the mass of the car, so we should be able to work out the oscillation period. Omega equals root k, 50,000 over d, 1,000. So what's that? Let's cross out some zeros. 
So it's root 50 over 1. Now that's more than root 10, which is 3, and less than root um, 100, which is 10, so it's probably something like 7. Something like that, close enough. So we've got an uh, angular frequency of 7 radians per second. How many actual oscillations is that per second? The oscillation is 2 pi radians, so that gives a frequency of 2 pi, sorry, of 7 over 2 pi. Now pi is about 3, 2 pi is about 6, which is close to 7, so that's about 1. So it's going to oscillate. We'll do about one oscillation. Second. And that actually seems kind of plausible because I know that if you bounce up and down in the car, you sort of get a um, sort of whoop, 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 sort of once per second sort of bumping up and down. So that makes sense. It's not implausible. So, what size ripples will you get? Well, you've got your car driving along at a speed v, going up and down at about 1 per second. So how far, how far will it go per oscillation? will be about v meters per second. So if it's travelling at 20 meters per second, it will be about 20 meters for oscillation. Now we'd set to say it's doing a velocity of about 60 kilometers per hour. And convert that into meters per second, so multiply by a thousand and divide by 60 and again by 60, and that indeed comes out as about 20 meters per second. So it goes 20 meters per second, oscillates once per second. So, corrugations should be 20 meters across, not 20 centimeters. Whoops! So that looks pretty bad for this theory. I don't think this is a sensible theory. Um, if cars are set oscillating in roads, it should lead to very big gentle, 20 meter long oscillations, not little tiny few centimeter ones. Um, now we have to make a lot of approximations to get here. Are they sensible? Well, I mean, the spring constant might be out by a factor of two or three. I mean, it might not be one to two centimeters, it might be three or one. Um, that might change your answer from 20 meters to 10 meters or 40 meters. That's not going to make any difference, it's still wrong. Car might be going slower or faster than 60 kilometers an hour. So it's going half that speed. Um, again, that might make a factor of two difference. So it might get it down to only 10 metres, or even 5 metres if you combine both of them. That's still a lot more than a few centimetres. So all the approximations we had to make, um, speed, spring constant, mass, of, um, really don't make much difference. There's almost, they're all good enough. There will be a factor of two or three or so. So it looks like this theory is dead. Busted. Back to the drawing board, let's find something else.